Have you ever helped a blind person go across the street? Or help a senior citizen? Or give somebody some help? You know, just, you know, hell the door for somebody, an elevator? I mean, don't you have a good feeling inside? Like, how many of you get a good feeling inside when you do something good for somebody? Ladies and gentlemen, giving creates energy in ourselves and in others. Les Brown skillfully weaves life-changing and compelling influential stories that leaves a lasting impact. In today's video, Les talks about the importance of giving, the importance of having a helping mentality, how it influences our life and stimulates our growth. See, we're really giving to ourselves. See, that's really the law. When you are giving, you are giving to yourself. That's who you're giving to. So you want to give yourself some good gifts. There's a principle underlying the concept of giving. The energy flowing through us as we do, that love generates abundance in our lives, and we are able to reap so much from life as a result of our giving. How are you giving up your life? Do you know to the degree that you are giving to that degree determines how much you enjoy life, how meaningful your life is. The things, ladies and gentlemen, I used to do, I can't do now. That is unbecoming for the role that I have selected with where I am at my life and what I want to contribute to life. It is inconsistent. I can't do it. Even if I desire to do it, I can't do it. No, because it doesn't fit because of my vision of myself and the contribution that I want to make to life. Because it's not enough to give the message. You must also be the message. Next thing is that we must give out of a sense of oughtness. Emmanuel Kant in the book called Critique of Pure Reasoning. He says sometimes we must give out of a sense of oughtness. That the certain things that happen, that we just say something ought to be done about this. A policeman in Washington, D.C. was walking one of his patrol areas and he came up to a car in a park and the car was running and he saw a figure slumped over the steering wheel. He got there looking in with a flashlight and he saw a 14 year old boy with a bullet through the back of his head and he said, oh no. He has a son himself. That could have been his son. And he says something ought to be done. We're losing too many young people. And so this man went home. He had like several thousand dollars worth of exercise equipment in his basement. He rented a place. He started bringing the kids in to get them involved in taking care of their bodies and physical exercise and athletic activity. He now has expanded that to getting them involved in entrepreneurship for new adventures, saying that this is a free enterprise system and the more enterprising you are, the freer you are. And now these kids have started their own business and have a little shopping center that they run, they operate, they are managing. And they have commercials on radio and I'm going to be going there doing some training with them. So he decided, because of that event, that I ought to do something. Now, some of the things that's going to happen when you look out and see what can I contribute to, what can I give, I guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have a voice that's saying, it's just no use, it's, it's, it's out of control now. There will be a voice telling you that you'll be wasting your time and wasting your energy and wasting your effort. I say, don't listen to it. Listen to that still, small voice that says, I can do something, and I ought to do it. We ought to do it. The Israeli said this, nothing can resist the will of a people that will stake even their existence on the extent of their purpose for good. I strongly believe that as we begin to look toward the future and that as each day we get up in the morning and be it that you're going to give to make the environment safer for everybody on the planet, be it that you're going to do things to help the sick or the physically disabled or recovering crack cocaine addicts, be it that you want to help and contribute to youth or do something for the homeless, whatever you want to do, if you get up in the morning out of a sense of oughtness and decide that I am an opening for the universe, that life can work through and use me as a channel and as an instrument for change. And each day we get up, we make it our personal business to make a difference in those areas that we're concerned about. How are we going to do it? We don't know, but we know that we can make a difference. And we might not be here to see the results of our efforts. We might not be here as many of the people who before us made sacrifices that they did not live to see 
or reap the benefits of. James Weldon Johnson, Stony the Road We Trod, Bitter the Chesting Rod, Felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat have not our weary feet come to the place for which our fathers died. We've come over a way that with tears has been watered. We've come treading a path through the blood of the slaughtered. When we came here, somebody paid the price for us to be here. And as we begin to look toward the future, we all have an obligation to give something back. A lot of us don't give more because of the fact that we allow ego to get in the way. I'm thinking of a man that was well-dressed walking through a neighborhood one day. And a lady came to the door and she said, hey, you. He stopped, he said very politely, yes, ma'am. She said, come here. He came to her. Yes, what may I do for you, ma'am? She said, I want you to cut my wood. He said, yes, ma'am. He took his coat off. And he took the axe that she had there. And he cut the wood. She said, I want you to take some around the back. And put some in the fireplace. He said, yes, ma'am. And he did that. And after he finished, she said, what do I owe you? He said, nothing, ma'am. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you. She said, okay. And he left and he was walking down the street with his coat over his shoulder. And her maid came up. She said, do you know who that was? And the lady she worked for said, no. She says, that's the great Negro educator, Booker T. Washington. She looked out the window. She said, is that right? She said, send for him. And that lady that Booger T. Washington went in and cut the wood for, contributed several million dollars to his dream of building an institution of higher learning, Tuskegee Institute that is standing today. What if he had said, you said do what? Cut your wood. Don't even come up in here with that kind of stuff. You better cut your own wood if you wanted to get it cut. You cold. He didn't allow his ego to get in the way. He gave what he had. He contributed. How much have we denied ourselves? How much have we blocked ourselves? Because we allow that little ego to get in the way. To prevent us from giving and serving, which is the essence of life. Which is the essence of life. It's about service. And so I say as you look out on the future, decide that you are going to allow your life to be a life of service. Decide that you are going to give more than you have ever given before. Decide that each day that you are given life, that you're going to make a difference with your life, that you're going to make a statement with your life, that once again, as opposed to sitting back feeling like a victim, that you're going to see yourself as a channel, as an opening for the universe to work through. And that you'll say to life, use me. Oh, use me. I got more to give. Use me. Repeat after me. I want life to use me. I want to give more. Share more. Be an expression of love. Be an instrument of hope. To impact our youth. To recreate their future. I'm grateful for life. I'm grateful for being here. I'm grateful to be able to serve.
I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I wanna be the greatest Everybody on the face shit I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest I make this Every day and I'm impatient Hoping one day I blow up from the basement Statement The top is so vacant I don't hear shit that I think is amazing Waiting For my day when I'm playing Sold out shows for a thousand faces Hey, Give me that crown Get in my way and to be put down It ain't your place All this my town If I want that shit then I'll get it right now I'm losing it The noose it fits Some loose shit A stupid myth You choose to live or choose to dip You choose to fight or lose your grip And lose a gift Oh I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I wanna be the greatest Everybody on the fake shit I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest I make this every day and I'm impatient Hoping one day I blow up from the basement Statement, the top is so vacant I don't hear shit that I think is amazing Waiting for my day when I'm playing Sold out shows for a thousand faces Hey, Give me that crown, get in my way and to be put down It ain't your place, all this my town If I want that shit then I'll get it right now I'm losing it, the noose it fits Some loose shit, a stupid myth You choose to live or choose to dip You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift Oh! I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign Yeah! There's no mercy in this world, just hunger, thirsty persons In different versions, each new update, that shit worsens Why? Pull back the curtain and you'll see the different vermin We all have different burdens that all seem to cause disturbance Yo, so do me a favor, don't treat me like a neighbor Don't need the different flavors of your problems just to savor I've